What's up everyone, it's Spectre. And this is not the video that I was planning on coming out with this week, but I feel like it is very important. So recently there has been a Portland, Oregon homeowner that decided to kill his neighbor because he was Antifa. And he was identified later by the furry community, apparently, as being an alt-right furry. I'm going to go ahead and say this right here, right now, that it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you fall on. You can be on the left, you can be on the right, you can be in the center. But as soon as you start advocating for violence, taking violence into your own hands, or wanting violence to somebody else, primarily your political opponents, then you're an extremist, period. But I know for a fact that if this person really is a furry, this is going to be used to attack the fandom. And not just the fandom, but it's also going to be used to attack the, the right because, you know, right-wing media trying to make these people look like the heroes. But it is definitely going to be used to attack furries. Because it has been said time and time again by quite a few non-furries that, uh, that we have a... Uh, we have a Nazi problem. And kinda, kinda, I can see it. I don't really think we do that bad. It's just that they have a much louder voice, a bullhorn, and a much, much taller soapbox. Because these people do not represent the fandom. Nobody represents the fandom. And we should not be taking one person's account for anything about the fandom in general. I don't represent it. The YouTuber or Twitch streamer or Twitter user that has the most followers and subscribers. They don't represent the fandom. Nobody does. And it should stay that way because gatekeeping is kind of necessary in some cases, but it can lead to a lot of superiority complexes by people, and that's, that's not fun to deal with. And the reason these people have the loudest voices anyway is because over the past few years I have noticed that people who are a lot more in tune with reality, tend to just kind of stay quiet because we just want to live our lives. We don't want to have to get involved too much into politics. We don't want to have to resort to violence for anything. We just want to live our lives. But then, of course, we have these kind of people that come along and mess things up for everybody. And unfortunately, when they belong to some sort of group, like the fandom, they tend to have a impact on that particular fandom or community or whatever that kind of sours everyone else's outlook onto them and furries already don't have a very good reputation as it is as much as i wish that was fixed and i don't honestly think there is a way to fix it because the furry fandom is more of a reflection of reality than it is anything else so this is definitely going to be used to attack furries it is going to be used as an example of why furries are bad, used in videos to be like, hey, this furries are crazy, crazy nut jobs who resort to violence to get their way. And really, that's not a furry problem. That's just a, in general, world problem that I think we need to work on. But because this guy's a furry, that, that's going to stand out. That's, that's the word that stands out for everybody. So, hey, watch out for furries. We're all, we're all crazy, violent people. And once again, like I said, don't take this to any heart, but people like this don't represent the fandom. Nobody should represent the fandom, especially people like this. Nobody should be gatekeeping anything. And this is just something that we are going to have to look at and be like, hey, just because this guy is a furry doesn't mean that is a reflection of the fandom as a whole. But that's where I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Y'all take care. Be safe. Don't let don't let people like this get to you and bring the fandom down a couple notches. There's a lot better people out there than than this. So y'all stay safe. We'll see you in the next one. Spectre out.